Imagine if there was a pill you could take to treat COVID before COVID causes pneumonia and low oxygen levels. Could an antiviral medication called malnupiravir eliminate SARS-CoV-2 from an infected person's nose and throat? This oral medication, which is taken twice a day for five days, was initially developed for the treatment of influenza. Malnupiravir seems to also be effective against SARS-CoV-2. There was a phase 2A study that was recently done. It enrolled 202 non-hospitalized adults with signs and symptoms of COVID-19 and confirmed infection. At baseline, 42% of participants had detectable levels of SARS-CoV-2 virus when it was cultured. The study had three arms of the treatment group, taking 200 milligrams, 400 milligrams, and 800 milligrams of malnupiravir, respectively. And there was a control group. Participants' noses were swabbed on days 3, 5, 7, 14, and day 28. A reduction in SARS-CoV-2 was noted in all treatment groups, but was only considered to be significant in the 800 milligram group. There's a much larger phase three trial underway with 1,300 participants. Malnupiravir, it works by introducing copying errors when viral RNA replicates. Similar to DNA, RNA is made up of four different nucleosides. In RNA, there's adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. Malnupiravir exists in two forms. In one form, it mimics cytosine, and in the other form, it mimics uracil. When SARS-CoV-2 grows in the presence of this drug, it's RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, the enzyme that reads RNA, it reads cytosine as uracil and then puts the wrong nucleoside in that RNA sequence. This misreading, it creates a massive number of mutations in the viral genome, rendering the new RNA useless. Molnupiravir was originally developed at Emory University and was later acquired by Miami-based Ridgeback Biotherapeutics, who later partnered with Merck and Company to develop it even further. In April 2020, a whistleblower complaint by a former head of BARDA, Rick Bright, expressed concerns that similar drugs had the potential to damage DNA. Bright notes in his complaint that, quote, similar experimental drugs in this class had been shown to cause reproductive toxicity in animals and offspring from treated animals had been born without teeth and without parts of their skulls. George Painter, who's CEO of Drug Innovation Ventures at Emory, he replied to that comment saying, quote, we haven't seen robust evidence for any sort of mutagenicity as had been seen in the past by others. In the phase 2A clinical trial, seven participants discontinued treatment, though only four experienced adverse events, none of which were considered related to malnupiravir. As of the making of this video, the trial is still blinded, so what the exact adverse events are still not known. There are also several other antiviral drugs for COVID that are in development, like Upamostat or RHB107, then there's AT527, and then favipiravir. And what about COVID prophylactic drugs? Let's say you're exposed to someone with COVID. Is there a post-exposure prophylactic drug that you can take? In December of 2020, researchers at Georgia State University published a study in Nature Microbiology that showed that giving malnupiravir to ferrets infected with SARS-CoV-2 prevented transmission to uninfected ferrets housed in the same cage. So this is great news for ferrets. Human trials should be coming soon. What about another treatment option for COVID-19 that must also be given early in the course of illness? Monoclonal antibodies. SARS-CoV-2 uses a spike protein to attach to the ACE2 receptor and then enter human cells. Monoclonal antibodies bind to a specific protein surface, meaning antigens. These monoclonal antibodies bind to the spike protein of the virus, preventing it from invading the human cell. When it does this, it also tags it to let the immune cells of the body know that it should destroy it. Monoclonal antibodies can be produced by exposing a mouse or a hamster to an antigen, and the antibodies made are then collected. Today, antibodies can be made in the lab and are used to treat nearly 100 conditions including cancer and autoimmune disorders. The monoclonal antibodies used to treat COVID-19 include Regeneron's clone of an antibody harvested from a person who recovered from COVID-19 and an antibody harvested from a genetically modified mouse engineered to have a human immune system. Eli Lilly's monoclonal antibody, Bamlanivimab, was identified in a blood sample from a patient who recovered from COVID-19. 
Clinical trials showed that monoclonal antibodies can prevent deaths and hospitalizations in people with mild to moderate COVID-19 who are at risk of severe disease. A study of VIR7831, a product made by VIR and GSK, reduced the chances of hospitalization or death by 85%. A randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled phase 3 study showed a cocktail of two antibodies, bamlanivimab and etesivimab, both made by Eli Lilly, they cut the risk of hospitalization and death by 87%. Monoclonal antibodies will likely provide the greatest benefit for those older than 65 and those with a suppressed immune system or a comorbid condition like obesity, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, or diabetes. They've also demonstrated safety and efficacy in their respective clinical trials, but they're not widely used in the United States. Why? Well, there's several various reasons for this. One, besides the cost to produce them, they need to be given through an IV in an infusion center. Two, the results of the clinical trials have been released and submitted to the FDA, but some have still not been published in peer-reviewed journals. Three, there was initially mixed messaging on whether monoclonal antibodies are effective. They are believed to be effective in the early phase of COVID-19, but not the late phase. Since they're directed towards the spike protein and variants have mutations in the spike protein, there's also a question on whether they're going to be effective against the new SARS-CoV-2 variants. So far, they seem to be effective against the B117 or the UK variant. Using a combination or a cocktail of monoclonal antibodies can help ensure that at least one antibody will fight the infection. Also, they last about three to four months in the human body. Antibodies made by the body as a result of the vaccine, will they give protection for about a year or so. Regardless, monoclonal antibodies are an effective stopgap until everyone can be vaccinated. So that's gonna be all for this one. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click on subscribe and hit that bell notification. That way you can be notified of when my next one comes out.